So it turns out there's certain programming styles that are not aligned with Agile. Um, somebody's actually said one time that it's kind of like thinking about giving a pencil to somebody and claiming they're now an artist. Uh, it's not enough just giving the pencil. You got to show them how to actually draw properly. So there are certain techniques that, that came along with Agile. So when Agile came out originally from uh, Kent Beck and Ward Cunningham and some guys in the Northwest United States, there was a programming style associated with that. And that programming style has not gone with the Agile. Uh, people are trying to use some of the Agile practices without the corresponding programming style. Uh, and it has not worked out that well. I think actually you basically need to practice it and practice with people that actually have a better style than you are. So one of the nice things is when we're doing pair programming and we're rotating pairs, you get a chance to experience other people's style. And you want to pick up their good points and sort of share your good points with them. So at the end of every pairing day, each of you is a little bit better programmer than you were the day before. So I learn mostly just by doing, and that's the way I've learned my, most of my techniques, is by working with other very bright people. Uh, actually, there's people, there's a technique called Pomodoro, which is named after, which is the, I think the Italian name for apple. But it's a little timer, so you set a kitchen timer for 15 minutes. And so you start writing your test, and 15 minutes later, if the timer goes off and you're not finished, throw it away, start over again. Uh, we do that in the class. I actually set my timer for 15 minutes, and if you haven't finished, we throw it away and start over again. So it takes, it takes a while for the programmers to understand that if they keep working on it, another 15 minutes, another 15 minutes, it doesn't get any better. And they're wasting all those extra time. Just back off and try to find some other way to attack the problem. Or, or talk to somebody else, get another idea from somebody if you're, if you're stuck. Um, but if you're stuck for 15 minutes, you'll probably be stuck for an hour. Save yourself 45 minutes, stop now. Unfortunately, I only teach boot camp to the companies I tend to work with because um, I really don't, I really like t writing code myself, but more than like teaching. Teaching is fun, but I teach in order to write code with my colleagues. Um, but we did put this training class together. Uh, originally, this training class was, oh, boot camp became part of ThoughtWorks University uh, when we started ThoughtWorks University in 2005. Uh, so ThoughtWorks does offer this training. Uh, so you can contact ThoughtWorks for, for getting classes like this. And there's certain people I've trained to teach this class as well that you'll find throughout the world. Um, I have a former, former student that uh, now teaches at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, so I, you can get the course, uh, you can get some of the material there as well. I think there's certain languages that are more agile friendly. Uh, in other words, certain languages that are, it's harder to violate the principles of agile. Uh, I would say a language like, uh, like C, C++ or Java or even C Sharp not necessarily very agile friendly. You can write some very bad code in those. Uh, you start using languages like Python or Ruby, it's much more easier to conform to agile principles with those languages. Um, the languages sort of encourage that style. Um, I learned object programming and this style of programming when I was using Smalltalk, and it was very hard to write Smalltalk and make it look like COBOL. Um, and so I was encouraged to write code the responsible way. Um, sometimes it would get stuck, but then you ask for help. But there's certain languages that are much more friendly to this. That being said, it, you can use these same techniques with almost any language. I write my visual basic macros for Excel in this style. Uh, very small Excel macros, they interact with each other, they do exactly one thing. Uh, for all intents and purposes, they're very crisply done uh, and along the same style. So you can use any programming language. Uh, I will say, if you looked at examples of, v of visual basic macros, you'll see all of them will be very ugly in my, stand, in my eyes. Uh, so they're not, just not good examples of other places. Uh, I would say in the Java world, for example, uh, some really gorgeous designs are done in the collections framework. Uh, so there's an example of how to do it well. Uh, the swing framework, as much as we don't like the swing UI framework, uh, from, a, from a design perspective, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so these are one of those types of codes you should study and understand why they did things the way they did.